Hey there, and welcome back to My Time to Fly. I'm quickly coming up on the first year of my Mooney ownership. It just seems like the right time to talk through the real costs associated with owning an airplane. If there's specific questions that I don't answer, just leave it in the comments below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you're new to the channel, thanks for being here. It's my goal to bring you along on my aviation journey, hopefully providing just a bit of inspiration along the way. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you enjoy seeing some real life general aviation. First, let me remind you of exactly what I purchased. It's a 1963 Mooney M20C powered by a 180 horse Lycoming engine and a constant speed prop. It has the famed Johnson Bar retractable landing gear system and manual flaps. It's IFR capable, although it's not currently certified. It does have a non was KLN 94 GPS, which we use extensively for VFR flight. There is no working autopilot in the plane, although it flies so straight, I'd be hard pressed to ever spend the money on one. There are around 3,700 total hours on the airplane, 840 hours on the engine, and about 75 or so on a new prop from before our purchase. The paint is a little thin and the interior is original, but not too shabby. If you're interested in more detail about the Mooney specifically, I'll link a video in the description below of a walk around I did back in the spring. It's also important for you to know that the plane is hangared at a small airport just outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's clear to me that your geography can have a profound impact on the total cost of ownership. It's also worth noting that I do own the plane in a partnership. Although that means many of the costs I'll talk about are cut in half, I think it makes sense to talk about the total sum of costs in this case. If the totals are more than you want to spend, then perhaps you should also pursue a partner or a couple. Finally, I'm not including any costs associated with financing the airplane. There are so many ways to approach buying an airplane. I could even start to guess what your situation might be. I'll make a video detailing some airplane financing options later on. Whether you're paying cash or financing the plane, it is my opinion that general aviation airplanes are currently appreciating at a rate that will allow you to get your money back out of the plane when and if you choose to sell it. Assuming you approach ownership with the mindset of improving the airplane throughout your ownership, that is. So without further ado, let's dig into the numbers. I'll begin with the fixed costs, first being insurance. I know there is a lot of talk about the cost of insurance rising and many factors play into the cost of your premium. In our case, both of the owners are low time pilots with now about 25 hours of complex time. Neither of us are IFR rated either. Perhaps our saving grace is that the whole value on our airplane is fairly low. With that said, our insurance premium is $2,074 annually. For those of you who are interested, we are insured through Avemco, who I've been quite impressed with. Next up is our hangar rent. Like I mentioned before, we live in a suburb of Grand Rapids, Michigan, which fortunately is a fairly low rent area. The airport where we hangar, 8 Delta 4, is owned and operated by the village of Sparta. Perhaps the best aspect of our airport is that our airport manager is a great pilot advocate. He does a great job making decisions that truly benefit the pilots and aircraft owners. So anyways, our hangar is nothing special. It's a standard T hangar, which some might call stacked. The building houses 10 or so airplanes with no dividing walls between the aircraft. There's electrical, but no heat, and all the doors are manual. You can get a better idea from my video where I took some time to clean out the hangar. You can find that in the card above. Anyway, we do feel blessed to have our airplane at 8 Delta 4, especially since our hangar only runs $162 a month, which is $1,953 a year. The next set of expenses do begin to blend fixed and variable costs. You probably guessed it, maintenance costs. Let me start by saying we've been extremely lucky. During the first year, we haven't really had any unexpected maintenance costs. I know I shouldn't even say those words, but hey, it's the truth in this case. 
So, I classify the fixed side of maintenance expenses to be anything happening at annual. We all know our planes have to go through annual each year, and there's a cost to that work. Sure, you're able to spend more if you choose to perform upgrades at that time, or you can skimp out and defer a bunch of maintenance, which I certainly don't recommend. This year, we did have a bit of extra work completed, including some painting on the bottom panels. Anyway, our total for the annual this year was $2,570.06. If you're interested, you can see a further breakdown in the video linked above. The variable maintenance costs are things like oil, headlights, nav lights, all the little things that quit on you uh, throughout the year. This year we spent $479.74 on those extras. So our total maintenance spend was just a hair over $3,000. The final category of costs are those which are completely variable. That is costs only caused by flying the plane. This might include items such as fuel and tie down fees. I'm sure there are more, but those are the only variable costs that come to mind. In our case, our only variable cost was fuel. This year, we spent $2,025 in fuel. Of course, I haven't told you how many hours we flew quite yet. So in 2020, the total cost of ownership on our 63 Mooney M20C was approximately $9,102. In that time, we flew 52.3 hours on the tack. After a little easy math, it cost us $174 an hour to fly the Mooney in 2020. Like I said, that cost was per hour based on tack time. Those 52 hours would likely have been 65 or even 70 hours on a Hobbs feeder, which every flight school uses. So based on Hobbs time, our cost was only about 130 an hour. For a quick reference, at the same airport, we can rent an IFR capable Cessna 172 for 140 an hour wet. So of course, the question of the day is, is it worth it? My answer is, of course it's worth it. First, it's quite rare to find a rentable Mooney. And if you did, you'd likely pay more than you could rent a 172 for. Beyond that, I would much rather share a plane with one other pilot, or none at all, rather than 10, 20, or even 50 other pilots renting. This means that when you have good days, it's much more likely the plane will be available and in good condition. I also find a lot of confidence in knowing exactly who has been flying the aircraft I'm taking my family in. I'm not suggesting that people are intentionally abusing the rental fleet. I just struggle to believe the level of attention on rentals is anywhere near that of a typical owner. So to sum it all up, it costs just as much money to own your own plane per hour than it would to rent if you were able to fly about five hours a month or more. Anything less than that, you might be better off running. That is, unless the peace of mind of having your own bird is more important. On the other side of the equation, if you can't stand the risk of the inevitable large maintenance expense, it might just be worth continuing down the path of renting. Either way, I'm glad to have the Mooney. It's afforded me some great adventures so far, with many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow along on those adventures. And as always, I encourage you to find your time to fly.